Since the hotel opened its doors in 1903, the daily demands of guests have been met by English-style butlers. They're schooled in every aspect of a guest's stay. During the visit, what are all things we have to keep in our mind? So basically getting ourselves ready for the VIP visit. It can be a state head, it can be a business head, it can be a celebrity. Okay, just keep the uh, tea setup ready and also the breakfast setup because uh, she will call any moment. Hotels are like a second home to the guests who are traveling and as far as the business travelers are concerned, uh, they can't take their entire team along with them. So butlers are the one who, who create or gives a kind of service what they are used to it in their places, in their home or in their uh, business unit. Then you start doing the research on the preferences. For example, somebody have a habit of uh, uh, jogging, for example. So you know that now you have to have a jogging map in the room. So these are the things which you have to remember, especially with the, when the lady valets are coming. So they have loads of uh, their vanity requirement, like a, um, what do you call it as a heavy duty, uh, your uh, hair dryer. That's the reason we as a butler service are here, to, make, to give the meaningful luxury to a guest. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Ben, thank you. Prakash, this is your turn. <coughs> when a regular guest returns, their room is set to their specific preferences by their preferred butler. You, you want it to be perfect for you? Yes, ma'am. What do you know about this guest? Uh, he's a, a very regular guest. <laughs> and his preference is like he likes talcum powder in the room, which will be set from the housekeeping side. Adrian is preparing for the arrival of Tika Singh. Whenever he comes up to, up to us, we definitely look after him. Tika is a descendant of one of India's royal dynasties, with a history rather older than the hotel itself. A garland oh, as thank well. You. Thank you. How are you? Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Singh. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, sir. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you back, sir. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, how nice. This is beautiful. Thank you, sir. Huh? I Can love I, I love in, these flowers. Yes, absolutely. Who who did this? Uh, the housekeeping. Department. Please thank them. Certainly, yes, absolutely. Absolutely exquisite. Thank you. Enjoy your stay with us, thank sir. You. Pleasure to have you back, thank sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll have some of that. What, Mr. Singh? What would you like to enjoy, sir? I'll try the guava berry. Certainly, yeah. sir. Thank A you. cold towel for you, sir. Thank you. It's very nice. And where would you like me to place the guava berry for you, sir? I'll drink it right now. In sir. fact, yeah, thank you. I'm not entirely sure how I should address you. Is uh, it Mr. or Your Excellency? What, what, oh, what? oh, Tika G. Tika G. <laughs> yes, sir. And Tika means? It means Crown Prince. Before independence, the Maharajas ruled over vast swathes of India. Tika's great grandfather was the Maharaja of the province of Kaputhala. From every corner of the state, they bring him gifts. They make obeisance before the Maharaja and his four-year-old grandson. He became ruler at the age of five. They weigh him with pieces of solid gold, which afterwards are distributed to the poor. And days of feasting end with a durbar and state procession. The last Maharaja, my great-grandfather, died in this hotel. So uh, he was on his way for a last visit to Europe in 1949. And uh, there's been great attachment with this property. Five generations have come. He was very friendly with Mr. Tata. He came for the inauguration in 1903. The original founder of the exactly, hotel? Exactly, yeah. Mm. And he said he was very impressed that Mr. Tata had built a, a world-class hotel. <laughs> it's nice for the descendants to continue this tradition, you know. this is a nice way to maintain a link with the past. Does everybody here know who you are, do you think? Yeah, uh, some, some not. I keep it very discreet. It's better. <laughs> why, why is that? I think uh, 
I think I enjoy the aspect of being incognito. Uh, you really get to know people better, and they're completely transparent with you. They're, you know, they're relaxed, and uh, that's the way it should be. Otherwise, they get a little stiff. <laughs> yeah, if you just hang those suits up, yes. please. But in fact, you're a member of the royal family. Oh, so what? It's nice to be welcomed normally too, you know, as a regular guest, I think. Mm -hmm. We are a, a, a democracy now, and it's nice to merge with New India. And I think uh, people appreciate that much more. And when they find out who you are, then, you know, uh, they're very, very intrigued and uh, use you as an example. I think it's very important to uh, remain humble. You know, we have such disparity in this country that, uh, and you have to be an example. Right, try and uh, do everything myself and travel normally and don't have hangers on. That's the way to do it, you know. I need to go and see a, a friend of mine, so I think I'll go there. I, I need to get some flowers organized. Can you organize a nice bouquet of flowers? Certainly, sir. The flowers are for Tika's friend, Sharon Stone. The Hollywood actress is staying in the presidential suite. She's in Mumbai to host a charity auction at the hotel. Deputy General Manager Parveen is in charge of this high-profile event. Angaru. Hello. We have some celebrities from Hollywood coming down, and a lot of Indian Bollywood celebrities would be there. And most of the tables have been picked up by some of the top people in India. So basically, these are Indian celebrities who have donated and taken a table, and, it, and they're going to take part in the dinner. Then in between, there is also going to be an auction. It's a sit-down dinner for about 323 people. How many people are involved in this operation? Uh, well, uh, from the hotel, we will have about 140 people just to serve the, the people in, in the front, and then there are chefs involved, and easily about 200 people from the hotel. And from the event management, probably another 150. So to put a function like this, you will, you will have about 300, 350 people who kind of go behind the scene and in front of the scene. But there's only 300 guests, invited guests. Yeah, so. but it's very complicated setup. So we started three days before, and then, you know, you've got to, and it, it, it's, you need to be precise in terms of the lighting, and so you need to do light checks a day before, you need to do sound checks a few hours before, and also in terms of it's a sit-down service, so you need about three people per 10 people. So, you know, the numbers keep going up. Good morning. Hi. We'll get quickly check the lobby. With 1,500 people working in the hotel, there are three members of staff to every guest. Executive housekeeper Indrani has over 200 room boys under her instruction. Uh, Ganesh, just write down the notes. We'll have to plan out for polishing of the lobby furniture in the night. What is that? Shift, 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 shift. I want you to change this plant. I want you to change this plant. There's a moth. Put it out, sir. Put it out. Do you have to be a little bit obsessive to do your job, do you think? I mean, what qualities of you does it require? I think the qualities will I say that the knack to see everything at every given point of time. What is this white thing over there? Leave a message for the morning shift. It has to be scrubbed. What, what have they done? So it's like we are being trained and tuned to always be looking out for things, to know things where it is going good, and at the same time, see what we can improve on. I want all the flower beds to be clean, but I don't want the guests to be disturbed. Ah, this is looking nice. Fantastic. No? I think this is the best polishing done. It's really lovely. It's absolutely sparkling floor, and I love it. Good morning. I'm looking for perfection. I'm looking for that fine detailing. There are many things which uh, sometimes my boys, even if they're regular in the areas, they cannot see it. 
okay and it's very important for me that i involve the boy that is why every area that i go you will see that i'm involving the boy the one who has to do it theek hai when you open the mini bar can you see the corner put your hand put your hand samajh raha hai na can you put this dust here ha huh? so i want this to be taken care i randomly try to check not one room a series of rooms so that i know that if a person needs to improve was it that it was mistaken in one room or was it a continuity when i took out the bathroom there was a small stain in that bathroom the pillows were not rightly ironed and he has missed out a stain on the bath sheet similarly he missed out a stain on the bathroom okay and though those are very faint stains but then we expect them to tune their eyes and look out for them over there can you see that change it once more all right Thomas has been a room boy at the hotel for nearly 3 decades. As I gaze from my window at the moon in its flight my thoughts all stray to you. Over the years, he's perfected the exact ways in which a room must be prepared. Why do you have to wear gloves? Only bed के लिए, bathroom के लिए दूसरा है gloves, double display. पहनो क्या नहीं नहीं पहनने का तो अगर नहीं पहनने का तो bed और थोड़ा dry रहेंगे. इसका नजर रखता पाल का. बहुत दे उम्र. इसके लिए वो ऐसे ही दिखते हैं ना उन्हें. अगर लूज रहने से ऐसा रहने से सोने के टाइम कंबर में दर्द हो सकता है थॉमस इज बीन क्लीनिंग फॉर मरिया मोर्स फॉर द लास्ट ट्वेंटी फाइव इयर्स 83-year-old Maria is an American oil heiress. She lives in the hotel for six months of the year. Thomas, just carry on as usual. I don't know. There's something about this. It has a certain air, you know, and, and tradition, which is very nice. When did you first come here? Oh, I first came here when I was. Well, they hadn't built the pool yet. Hello. Uh, I'd like uh, the bottle service, please. Thank you. I have been in this hotel for last five years, and she has been here much before us. So I can say that uh, she she grew with the hotel. <laughs> yes. Good afternoon. Uh, please, I'd like the usual order: the hot skim milk, and the uh, coconut water. And uh, is Rajesh on duty today? Okay, fine. If he could bring it, you know, she has been like a family for us. Somebody who stays with us six months is as good as our own parents or anybody. And obviously, her needs, though it can be a big refrigerator or a special table to showcase or to worship all her idols, or the little bookshelf that we keep every time she comes, that bookshelf curves and all the books are in it, is because it's like a home for her. Ajesh, hello. Hello, ma'am. We'll just have it in the usual place. Yes, ma'am. How's your day, ma'am? Maria doesn't eat Indian food or dine in the hotel's air-conditioned restaurants. She prefers to eat in her room. You like to have a fridge here? Yes, because uh, I buy things they don't normally give. So what happens when you're not here? I take it to a Yaz's house. and he kind he keeps it his wife is very sweet and we're i'm friendly with all of them he has two daughters teenage and uh, couldn't manage without him really when in india maria employs ayas as a personal assistant he spends the afternoons and evenings with her he was with the hotel and uh, under contract as a driver but i saw the potential <laughs> So I said, "Well, come and work for me." 
So he did, and as a driver, but he was very intelligent, and he went to university and studied uh, mechanical engineering or something like that. I guess helps, help, helps you all round all through the Helping, year, then? Yes, he yeah, does. He did for the past Except for years. Is it 15 now? Is that 15, coming up? 1999. Yeah, that's true. Since 1999. So you, you travel? Along with her as well. Yeah. Well, at a certain point... She knows just, my family, I know her family. You have to just <laughs> bow to the inevitable. It's harder to travel alone. And, uh, and of course, he's good company, he's fun. And uh, so anyway. Maria still works. She owns an oil business in Texas and is often up until the early hours making investments in America. You enjoy working? Oh, I do. What would you do all the time? I mean, you can't party every night, you know? And uh, uh, I don't consider it a waste of time at all. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Some people in your circumstances would just want to give up work by now. Oh, no way. I really enjoy it. And it's also my livelihood, you know. So... It makes your, your travels possible. It makes everything possible. I mean, you know, jewellery, everything else. All those things that most ladies like. And... Uh, you, you, en you enjoy the, the nice things of life, I mean. Don't we all? <laughs> Mumbai has always been very aspirational and Mumbai is called the city of dreams. In the past there has been history of people who were fairly common and came here to make it big in the film industry and struggled their way up and then kind of made it big and then there are also histories and stories of people who came from various parts of the country and established small business and then a year he flourished. So this hotel fits into that culture and you will find a lot of people when you talk to them and will tell you that first time their aspiration when they made it big was to come and eat in this hotel and then when they made it bigger was to come and stay in this hotel. So it's, it's fairly ingrained into the social structure and the memories of the people in the country. I can stay in any president's suite room in any five-star hotel in the world now. But this is a landmark for me. Taj. Ashish is a newly wealthy Indian businessman living in the UK. He's a regular guest and is staying in a £1,000 a night suite with his brother and a friend. You set up a call centre in India? Yes. Successful? Successful. Yes. Big money? Yes. Good money? Very big money. You travel around the world now? Yes. Can I show you my passport? Yeah. Just a minute. This passport is my new passport. So, I think uh, seven months ago. So, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four, fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty, sixty-one. 62 and 63. In how many months? Eight months. You travel the all, world? All, 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 anyway. This is Nepal, uh, this is Singapore, Hong Kong, Iraq, Macau, United States of America, India. Palace Services. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. How, how are you? Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Yes. Yeah, so we would like to set the order on the round table. Uh, yes, yes, please. Definitely, I love it. Mm -hmm. So, how is your morning in the it's, Taj? It's very nice, sir. Not too mm -hmm. much busy. Can you put some lemon on that papaya and some Definitely. black pepper as well? Yes. Ashish was 10 when he first visited Mumbai on a school trip. I came for uh, in my school tour. So see the Mumbai and Mumbai things 
and we see the gateway of India. And there is that time, there is a Taj Mahal hotel. So I asked my teacher, okay, what is this? So she is telling me, this is a Taj Mahal this, this is a Taj Mahal hotel and lots of big people are coming here and they are staying here. So I asked my teacher, okay, can I go inside? So he, she is telling me, no, you are not big. You are coming from middle class family. You are not going uh, in this uh, hotel. So uh, I, that time one of uh, my friend was with me. I tell him, one day I, be, I become a big man and I come here. And that is the, my dream. Lots of hotel, but I like this. Even you see this room, this, uh, I think height is uh, 16 foot or 18 foot. Generally, hotels 10 feet or uh, like this. I think I can't get, uh, this is a mahal. It's a palace. Mahal means, mahal is the Indian word, palace. So palace, so who can live in the palace? Then I'm, of course, I'm a king. So this hotel I rent for today. So today's I am a king. In India, uh, everybody has a dream for Taj. Boys come inside the night, boys. Each morning, Indrani holds training sessions with her staff, schooling them in the correct way to interact with guests. Uh, Sunil, we'll do a mock uh, an earning board delivery, okay? So you think that this is a door, and I'm the guest, and you have come to deliver an earning board. So continue. Come, start. I just knock uh, three times. Huh, okay. And, uh, uh, no, you don't. You don't have to say ting tong. Okay. Like that. It's a complete okay. drama and acting. Okay, fine. Uh, Tell. Talk, talk, talk. Okay. Come in. Uh, uh, good morning, Miss Gupta. Good morning. How are you, ma'am? Fantastic. You require the ironing and board, ma'am? Yes, I wanted the ironing uh, board. Can I... you make it a little fast? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sure, ma this is the way when you conduct a training, you have to do an actual. Okay. You understood when Abdul was saying, it's not that Abdul cotton pill or not know Abdul hard pill or not know But you have to be very <coughs> confident when you're speaking. Yes. You got my point? It also starts with how you deliver in the extra bits. I've seen most of the time, uh, the boy rings the bell. After that, he starts moving with his back towards the guest. You know, at that time, you should say, excuse me, ma'am, I'm just bringing it. You know, understood, no? Not everybody likes to see your backside. Your home life was like, how you grew up? My house like an ordinary. I don't have my own room. I don't have my own things. We have a four uh, brothers and sisters. We are all sleeping in one room. But we have a very good love with our uh, family. So because of my mother's love and my, uh, my family support, I'm, I'm here. Can I have some water, please? With pleasure. And a cup of tea? Oh. Yes, uh, I have some cappuccino. Cappuccino? And uh, this gentleman wants some green tea. Green tea for you, sir. I think this start and this love, my mother's love, uh, always with me. Right now, my mother is no more. Um, she's no more with me. But I don't know if she's in heaven. I think she's see me and she's happy right now. She's part of your success. I ask my mother, uh, mother, I want to go Taj. So she's telling me, you learn more, and uh, if you are uh, doing very good things, then you definitely achieve the goal, and you definitely go one day in the Taj. This is my mother's promise. And I did it. Now, this 60 meter road, this is a journey of 20 years. Few staff can afford to live near the hotel, as property prices in Mumbai are amongst the highest in the world. AJ works as a room boy. He lives two hours outside the city. His one-bedroom flat is shared with his wife, mother, daughter and two sons. 
मुंबई में जगह ही कम होती है इसलिए अरेंजमेंट करना पड़ती है सुनने तो ऐसा कुछ नहीं फैमिली के साथ खुश रहते घर की वाइफ अच्छी रहेगी तो साफ सफाई करते और खुश रहते हाउस वाइफ को बहुत काम रहता है वो भी मेरे साथ ही उठते मुझे भी तैयार करने के टाइम पे हेल्प करते पानी गर्म करना चाय बनाना और टावल देना AJ leaves for work at 5:30 every morning. AJ has been cleaning for guests for the last 18 years. एक दिन मैं वाइफ को इधर ताजमहल में लेके आया था तो फ्लोर पे भी लेके आया था परमिशन लेके तो मैं बोला कि मेरी वाइफ आई है तो उनको दिखाना है मुझे क्यों मैं क्या करता हूँ ऐसा तो उन्होंने बोला बाप रे इतना काम करना पड़ता है इतना कमरा तो मुझे तो हाथ देखा भी तो बोलते ना क्या घर पे आके थक जा� होटल लाइन में एक खुशी रहना पड़ता है किसी को गेस्ट को ही पता नहीं चाहिए कि यार ये तो ऐसा ही है ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए इसलिए हम लोग होटल लाइन में खुशी रहते हैं कि टावल हर तो किधर ऐसा बनता नहीं ना तो गेस्ट बोलते हैं वाओ इट्स द स्वान होटल में आए तो खुश रहना ही चाहिए कि खुशी से आते हैं और खुशी से ही आपको जाना चाहिए कि कोई कंप्लेट ना हो जाए आप मंदिर में आए तो मंदिर में ही रहो अच्छा बस With celebrities from around the world flying in for the charity auction, Parveen and his team leave nothing to chance. When does Sharon so, Stone walks yeah, in? Sharon Stone Stone makes remarks and in okay. introduction so, auction. So That's nine, about nine thirty. Nine thirty. So for fifteen minutes you can serve the second course. I mean the second replenishment. The roti is enough. But once Sharon Stone is on, then they want you to be completely back. So in that case, would they be okay if somebody wants they're Indian okay. breads? They're okay. That, they're uh, okay. So what you do is best is you also if you could just serve extra helpings of Indian bread. Working in the hotel and meeting some of the best people from, you know, important people from the country internationally, that becomes your job and then you're, you're doing that every day. 
but uh, that that also brings in a bit of responsibility and a bit of glamour and a, and a bit of uh, i would say um, you know every day is different so you really look forward to meeting these people and th that's the lucky part of this job it, it doesn't gives you enough time to go out so at least the world comes to you <laughs> Moving now, since people have finished the so? second course, mm -hmm. do you want us to wait till here to yeah. start clearing? Yeah. Okay. I'll send you guys the new run of show. Okay. There's nothing that's changed timing-wise, yeah. so okay. just like, so you have like... Sure. You know, sure. 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 Much of the evening's success will be down to Chef Oberoi and his 250 chefs. He's cooked for dignitaries and heads of state from around the world. President Obama, George Bush, Bill Clinton, uh, Mrs. Hillary Clinton, François Mitterrand, the German Chancellor, Singapore Prime Minister, the Japanese Prime Minister, the Japanese Crown Prince, Russian President, for everyone practically. So, I'll be some nervous. I don't think so. One has to be nervous about it. I think one should be confident of the product you're giving. And uh, I will never let a product go to the table which is not being tasted by me. It will never pass. It has to work. You see, once the customer has eaten in, there's no retake. Mm -hmm. You can't say, oh, I'll rectify it and bring it back. No. The bullet is already fired. <laughs> The evening's event is in aid of AMFAR, the AIDS research charity. Tika Singh will be escorting his friend, Sharon Stone. He's arranged for some couture luggage to be auctioned at the event. This is my invitation. This is the first event being hosted in India by AMFAR. I did something in, in camp for them uh, this year, in May. That's how I got to so meet some of the executives and they said, please try and help us in India. Mm -hmm. So one did. My hairdresser said that he had done Hillary Clinton's hair. Oh, it was so very special. And <laughs> um, it's so your first time in India? It is, which is a beautiful thing. It's, um, it's just a wonderful moment to have that first awakening to India. To see the gate on the Arabian Sea out your window is kind of impressive. I mean, the whole thing is really, really beautiful, really picturesque. and full of sights and smells and colors and it's just great. Are I don't have to see the partner you pick up this and go go. Without further ado, let's put our hands together and welcome the beautiful, the wonderful Miss Sharon Stone. I just have to tell you, get out your wallets. <laughs> I'm going to start with the, an, uh, an item that comes from friends of mine at Louis Vuitton and my escort, Tika Singh. This lot is for those who travel in serious style, so that's basically everyone here. I've got five, I'll go to seven. I've got 11. I've got 11, looking for lucky 13. 11, I'm looking for lucky 13. I've got 11, 13, sigh. I've got 13.
these threads has to be clipped up no? all of them i can see some uh, things coming out can you clip the threads dhanraj all of them please today princess astrid of belgium is arriving for her first stay at the hotel jaldi get the brush and wet cock wet cloth fast as ever executive housekeeper indrani is overseeing the finer details of preparation thoda sa thoda sa hata because wo phoolon ki ladi aayegi thoda sa zyada ne straight line ye the threads wagera just have it cleaned you come into this entrance and you smell jasmine you smell marigold you smell indian fragrance So the moment the lady comes out of the car, she sees it, and she sees she knows that she is stepping into Taj Mahal Palace. You know, and it is uh, as you must have heard of it. What we present inside is so different from the outside hustle, bustle, heat, and the sound. So, the moment you step down, you should know that yes, you're going to step into a different world. We want to feel her say wow when she enters. <laughs> For general manager Gorav, the protocol for welcoming a dignitary or head of state is never straightforward. The basic uh, difference is how do you greet uh, the head of state, the royalty? Okay, there are different ways. There are small nuances associated with every kind of greeting. For example, she's royalty; she'll be referred to as uh, Your Royal Highness, and uh, you don't extend your hand. Only if she extends a hand that you extend your hand. Okay, so uh, with the head of state, it's exactly the opposite. I mean, you're supposed to welcome them by extending your hand. So small things like these have to be kept in tow. I think that's the protocol as far as all royalties are concerned. But I, I, I think over a period of time, it's blurred a bit. I think they are far more flexible now, and I think they don't want to be rude if you extend your hand first. I don't think they want to be rude about it. So. Welcome to the hotel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Come. Come. This is an Indian traditional ceremony. Okay, yes, I will see what you're seeing here. Princess Astrid is here to commemorate the day in 2008 when terrorists tore through Mumbai and the hotel. On the 26th of November, as the sun set on the city, ten armed men in boats docked on the shore. They began a series of coordinated attacks on locations across the city. Many were the haunts of wealthy foreign visitors. Yeah, because that was a scary moment when she was the first to know when the bomb struck, because that was the entrance where they got in from, and the room was right on that. Entrance. I turned the light off so they wouldn't realize it. I normally am there, but I left at 9:30, 9:20, and 9:35 was the first uh, sign of attack. Once I reached home, my sister-in-law she told my wife that where am I, and then right. that's how we got to know that the hotel is under attack. And we were constantly on the phone the whole night. On the uh, mobile on phone. On the cell phone. After firing on the street outside the hotel, two terrorists walked into the lobby, dressed as backpackers. There were two thousand people inside the hotel, including diamond broker Mark Boston. And his wife, Millie. Millie. They'd been coming to the hotel for forty years. Millie was having um, having a bath, and uh, she said, 
I can hear gunfire. Can I came out. I said, Mark, what's going on? There's some, some people shouting or something. Suddenly everything went very quiet. And no, but you said there, were gun, there was gunfire. I remember saying, yes, yeah. but, but you should And I said, don't, don't be silly. Because what do you know about gunfire? <laughs> but then I realized that she was absolutely right, that it was gunfire. Just to hear the noise, running, the running all over the, the floors. Uh, you don't know what floor, but it was uh, the sixth floor. We were on the third floor mm. then, but you could hear shouting and... and and the shots shooting as well, which is quite terrifying. I just hear these shots and they were so new to me. So I thought maybe some housekeeping person is trying to open the service door behind. It happened once, it happened twice. And on the, at the third instance, my instinct said, there's something wrong. I went there behind and I opened the door and boom, there's a gentleman lying down, shot. The first uh, explosion which I heard happened right below my feet in the sense I was uh, in one of the walk-in coolers trying to get some vegetables from there and gone inside. And that happens to be above the Shamiana restaurant. So I went down, I, I came out of the Golden Dragon elevator, I just opened the door which goes into the, the lobby and I saw bodies lying around, a lot of blood and the smell of uh, gunpowder. You know, they had these heavy um, bags with no, ruck, rucksacks and they had AK-47s and uh, they, he was spraying the the weapon in all directions. I remember all the flash, the red flash from the, from the guns. You could see it, and people of course had scattered everywhere. And then Millie, then, then it all went terribly, terribly quiet. It was extraordinary, wasn't it, Danny? It was the most quiet, sort of eerie, scary quiet. We put our training shoes on because we'd agreed that if we had to run for it, you know, we need to have the right shoes on apart from anything else. So we were full, we were fully dressed, ready to, if we had to, had to make a move. And things got steadily noisier and noisier. And I mean, there were louder explosions. So you made a decision? Yes, but the decision we didn't take till, um, till quite a lot later. Mark, Mark was the next one. I, I came first and then he, he followed. And then we just go. Then we just went rushing down the we, stairs. We ran so fast, we went um, from the third floor, we went to the basement. And the flames were coming along the banisters here. So that this was all a flame, all this debris falling all the time. Mark and Millie managed to escape, but hundreds of guests remained trapped inside. Many of the staff on duty that night stayed to help them. It was our moral responsibility to look after them and uh, make sure that they are consoled, made comfortable. The chefs began hiding guests in the chambers, the hotel's private members club. This was the place where the guests were brought. Yeah. Uh, that night. This is basically the chambers, the Senate club. We brought them here away from the area where the action was taking place. So we thought this will be the safest place for these people. The plan was to evacuate guests through the kitchens. 
that's a very a slightly narrow corridor uh, which is behind the back area. So the guests were taken out from chambers and were being escorted out in batches because we had staff as well as guests over here. So in batches of 10, I was in the center of the corridor asking them to move on, move on because they were elderly guests, they were young children, they were ladies and who wanted to be all in a group and we wanted them to be out. So we, were, we kept on saying, please move ahead, please move ahead. And they were being escorted out to the back of the hotel. The first 30 guests, protected by a human chain of staff, made their way through the kitchens. Around 3.30, uh, when we were going through the process of evacuation, I was at a corner. I could hear the gunshot, sudden gunshots, and uh, uh, just panic after that. I was shot there, where you see the green baskets. This is where I fell, and I, 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 when I got shot, I didn't know. This is the place where I actually was on my feet. That's the area where I actually crawled down and got up and my hand was shot. I had a big entry wound from here. And I just turned around and the nearest door to me was the entrance to my kitchen. I entered the kitchen. So I was lying down on the floor next to a small refrigerator and where nobody could see me from outside. But there was a lot of firing outside and uh, Yes, there were screams and there were wails of people, and I could recognize a couple of voices of which whom I heard. It kept on happening for about an hour. I was in touch with my wife. I said, I'm this firing happening outside. Let's see what happens. I mean, I don't know. And I said, I love you, but uh, don't worry. Everything will be fine. Then she just said, Keep, take care. Whatever happens, let me know. And then I didn't speak much because I didn't want to make much of noise. Around 4.30, I heard a voice. One of the terrorists had walked in. He entered, he pointed the gun at me. I, I couldn't do anything, I was just lying down. So he comes inside the kitchen and in broken Hindi, uh, in broken English and Hindi, asked me to stand up, asked me to go out of the kitchen. There were two guests who were hiding over here, a father and a son. And then asked, well, what do you do? I said, I'm a chef, I cook. So one of them said, uh, I mean, I'll translate it in English. They said, you do it fast. These are not the people whom we want. Then they also asked, uh, are you Hindu or are you Muslim? So I said, I'm a Hindu, I mean, there's no harm in saying that. So they asked us to lie down on our stomachs in that corridor, small corridor. I was in the center, the son was on the left and the father was on the right. And then from behind, they almost point blank, they fired at us. So I, first thing was I got shot in my left leg that, that broke and the second was like a strong punch in my uh, stomach. I could feel that. These two gentlemen were also shot. I somehow kept quiet because I was trying to catch my breath. But these two gentlemen, they were shot again. I somehow didn't get shot again. And then there was silence. There was nothing which happened after that. The father and son had gone quiet. They were not moving. They both uh, passed away. In the meantime, I called up my wife. I said, I'm shot. But don't worry, I love you. I'm, I, I'll try to save myself. Then also, it never came to me that I'm going to die. 
I mean, it, that thought came to me, okay, is this how, what is death? I mean, is this how a person dies? I mean, is this how I'm going to finish off uh, um, after so many years of, uh, of existence? But that was the only thought. And then I kind of was trying to assess my damage as to, okay, I knew my leg was broken. Then I realized if I can think that much, <laughs> might as well put that energy to save myself. Chef Raghu was eventually rescued. The siege had lasted three days. Across the city, 164 people died. Of the 31 who lost their lives in the hotel, 11 were staff, most of them chefs. It was a terrible shock for each and every person. And um, because very young, young people died. I lost about seven of them. One of my senior most so executive sous chef, plus six young chefs, all of them died. I was a, on the same Same floor, level, other side, other side. Other side. The, uh, 476. Yes. And uh, after the terrorist attack, no more hotels for a while. So I went to live at their house, and I slept on the couch, and he, and he, and he sleeps in one room, his wife and the kids in the other, and uh, it was fine for me. And I tried not to be a bother. Time was not right to be or keep her anything anywhere in any hotels because everywhere it was a scare. You never knew who was going and to And she was herself scared too and so... You looked lost at her. Yeah. <laughs> Though the terrorists had failed to destroy the hotel, it took 18 months to completely restore the building. We came back very early in the new year in 2009. We came back for a wedding. Many felt she couldn't really handle uh, being in the hotel. So we went to the President Hotel. We stayed at the President. One night, I think. But then we, then we didn't feel comfortable. It was bizarre. We felt that we really ought to be here. We were actually not where we should be. You changed your mind? Yes. We changed our mind because we felt that, you know, the staff had had, a, had a, you know, an experience that was absolutely as bad as we had had, and, and perhaps in many cases much worse. And they'd, and, come, back. And they'd come back. Yeah. And, um, you know, met their friends, the, many of them are, you know, they're old friends, and we've known for years. If you get hurt at home, you don't stop going home. You don't do that. And this is a place where, where we have become men from boys. I joined this place when I was 19 or 20. It's quite young. It's been now 20 years I've been here. I'll turn 40 next year. So you just don't stop coming here. I mean, I cross that area every day. It gives me, makes me more stronger. Like, this is the place which has taught me what actual life is. This is what has given me the true meaning of life. As God has saved me from, from, from dying and for a reason. Let me enjoy life and make it better for other people. People connect themselves in all forms with this hotel and they're very emotional about it. It's not just a hotel, it's an institution uh, being existent for the last 110 years.
Good morning, everyone. And welcome again to uh, a very, very auspicious and a wonderful occasion this morning. Again, to celebrate the birthday of, of our hotel. You see, right from the time we joined this company, I think we have learned only that the guest is God. I think the relationship with the hotel for everyone is extremely emotional. And for the city of Mumbai, I think still it stands as an icon. Mumbai is the Taj and Taj is the Mumbai. So I would just like to, you know, say that. <laughs> 